Catfish people, what's up? Hey, coming to you from the comforts of the home because it's cold, cold, cold. 17 degrees, but we got a weather update. Next week is supposed to be some good weather, y'all, so I hope to see some of y'all out there on that bank line. This video that I'm making right now is by a request from a couple of my viewers. We're going to go over rigs, start to finish. I'm going to go over some weights, and uh, I don't know. We're just going to freestyle it, y'all. But let's get right into it, all right? So, y'all know I don't use anything special for leader line. Uh, I don't use the the Pacific leader line materials. Um, I just use regular Zepco, y'all. 50-pound test. Um, y'all watch my videos. Y'all y'all know I don't I don't have a lot of problem out of my out of my leader lines. Uh, my knots don't break, you know. Not going wood, but let's get into it. Um, we're going to go over some rattlers. We'll go over some different hooks. We're going to go over some different floats. And we're going to go over some different weights. Let's go ahead and start with the weights. All right. So, y'all like the shirt and the hat? Hey, we got some gear coming too, y'all. Um, I got here in my hand is four different bank weights. Well, uh, excuse me, four different catfishing weights that we use. Plate weights. Okay. These you will have to tie on or have some type of sinker slide in order to use. These, your fishing line goes through. All right. Bank weight, egg weight, basically somewhat the same, but they roll. Have to tie on or have some type of uh, clip or sinker slide to use. Line goes straight through. The plate weights are designed to sit and not move. So you would typically want to use these for current and use these in bodies of water where you don't have current. Okay? But use what you have, use what you can use. They have other kind of weights also, diamond pier shaped weights, whatever not. But these are the only four that I use. This is it for catfishing. And depending on what body of water I go to determines what weights I put on my line. Um, mainly in the river, this is all I use. Kerr Lake, Smith Mountain Lake, Philpot, my lakes is basically use these. And sometimes... You'll see me attach one of these to this in some of my videos. I'll, I'll, it's just because it's what I've got on this spot. My line is moving. I don't have enough weight to hold it down. I need to add something else to it. You'll see me clip a bank weight on. I always keep some in my, in my box. Always because I can add them to things to help hold it down to give me that more weight I need depending on my conditions. All right. Set those to the side. Let's go ahead and go over floats. Okay. I've got uh, a couple of different styles here. These are your Rattler Spook style float. Y'all hear it? Okay. There's a bunch of companies that make these. There's a bunch of different shops and people that uh, make these also and already make your pre-made rigs. But you can, everything that I'm showing you, you can order online through either a big company, Amazon, or through some small companies. Um, and I'll put some links in the description box on some of these places that you can get these items from. Now, this here is just a, a simple bass spook, topwater bass spook. And it rattles. This is... To help keep your bait up off of the bottom of the of the river or the, the wherever you're fishing. It helps hold your bait up, suspend your bait. Um just think of Santee rig, you know, that's but it puts action in the water on your line, and we'll go over that in more detail. This is a just peg floats, but this is a slotted peg float. And y'all hear me say I don't really like using these, but I do keep some on hand in case I need to add one or something. 
one of these bust up or break. I've got one of these on hand that I can slide back on my rig. But I prefer the cigar style peg float. Line goes through. You got the two black stops that you put on there. Keeps it. I can adjust. And we'll go over that more in a video. But I just wanted to show you all the slitted kind. And like I said, I particularly don't like any kind of slitted float, whether it be the egg style or the cigar style. Um, and they break really easy. But I do keep some on hand in case one of these break on my rig. I can chip it the rest of the way off. And I've got one of these on hand that I, so I can keep on going. All right, we'll set those to the side. Now, uh, anytime I order hooks and stuff, you know, you come in these bags, I keep them. They are perfect to keep your rigs in um yeah, we just need this one all right so these are two hooks that i use this is a just a regular standard circle hook i don't use j hooks y'all know i use circle hooks and you want them where the point comes back now this hook here i have put heat shrink on and I'll go over that also. And I have a video on that. Um, it's I don't do it all the time. I just do it on some. Uh, just testing different products that I see people make and use. I try to, you know, make them and use them. And, hey, if I can make it and use it for cheap, less, I try it. So, uh, that is on there to keep your line from slipping. You know, in case your knot slips in any kind of way. Which I don't ever really have a problem with that. And you can also tie that little extra knot. You see right there? And I'll go over that here in a minute. Um, and then this is a octopus style. Jay. I uh, usually, I typically like to use these when I'm mainly targeting flathead. Um, and... I have one of those rigs made up here as such. It kind of is like a J hook, but not exactly. All right. Now, what I do is, get on. Y'all know I carry a backpack, so this is my box. Keep everything in here. Um, little DIY tip for y'all guys. Safety pins. My swivels. That way when uh, you tip your tackle box over, you don't spill stuff all over your boat dock, deck, or ground or whatever not. You just pull off one at a time as you need it. Well, I can't see y'all. There we go. You know, same way I do with my sinker slides, I, I do my hooks the same way. Um, but I also put my hooks in a bag too, you know, I'll keep them in a bag because I don't want to get poked. But I keep them the same way. It's just so I can pull off one at a time as I need it. I don't have to worry about being about all tangled up and jammed up. But I do slide them back down in some kind of little bag. Like I said, I don't want to be poked. Um, and I will always, instead of carrying my whole big spool of line, I will pull me some off and put in a bag. And <clears throat> keep it in my tackle, my little tackle box here, so that I've always got it. Um, my rigs, I always just put them in a little sandwich baggie. Just roll them up, put them in a sandwich baggie. And then I have my bumper beads that I keep in there and I keep a different assortment. Uh, like I said, I like to use silicone and all these are silicone, but I do keep some plastic ones on hand when I'm making these rigs. And you always gotta keep you a good pair of fingernail clippers in your tackle box. I, to me, it's the best, quickest, easiest, manageable, most thing to, to clip my lines to, when I forgot to make a rig, tying on, cutting off, they're perfect. And if you lose them, they ain't cost you nothing. All right, so 
we'll get into the rig. Um, what I have here is a standard swivel. Okay. I have a polymer knot right there. And that's what I use. I, 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 people will correct me and say that I'm using this should be done this way or that should be done that way. These rigs that I'm showing you how to tie, watch my videos. They catch fish. And you do not hear me complaining about missing a lot of fish or losing a lot of fish or my lines popping. So, obviously, I've figured something out. I'm sure there's probably a better way to do it, but this is what I have over the last, getting ready to go into year five now of YouTube. And if y'all watch video number one to the last fishing video I put out, it's been a complete 180. And that is from me watching other YouTubers and how they do their stuff and me trying to... Uh, tweak it, twerk it, make it where it fits my bodies of water, and it has produced you big fish. So, that's all I need to say. So, if anybody wants to say I'm doing something wrong, then if there's a better way, shoot me a link to a video. I'll watch it, and if it is, if it's superring what I'm doing, I'll give it a try. But for right now, I've put in the work on this. And it is proof in the videos that it does catch large fish. So, this is about, I'm going to say it's about 13 inches <clears throat> leader line right here. Now, I've got, this is a egg peg float. And you can pull them pegs out. You know, make it slide. And what I do is, is. I will run it through the eye on the, that peg, okay, so that I can move it and it's protected up against those bumper beads. And then I'll slide, when I get my depth adjusted, I'll slide that plastic back in there and it'll keep it from sliding, all right, when you tighten it down. Now, so you got your swivel, peg float. You can do this any kind of way you want to, guys and gals. Some people put these on this side. Some people put them on this side. They are versatile rattlers. They spin. They make noise. And there's all kinds of video on YouTube on how to do this, how to make these, where to buy these at. Guys catching little fish, big fish, doing them all kinds of ways. Like I said, the way I'm showing you is what works for me. Now, I always try to keep a bumper bead between this and my peg. Because I don't want it riding. So, And I always make sure I got a bumper bead between... If I use one, two, three, every time I put a rattler on, I put another bead. Because I don't want them spinning... To, amongst their self. I feel like it's a bearing in between them. The way I get more action because I feel like maybe if they're spinning against their self they might get hung up. I don't know. Now, and then I put more bumper beads down. Of everything I've seen on uh, watching through social medias and people making other creators that if the catfish's mouth, okay, so it comes up and catches the hook. Let's say it goes to close and it's Closing on one of trying to close on one of these. These things are hard. You could pull that right back out of its mouth. So what I've noticed is to give yourself some distance from the hook. Now I see guys it works both ways, but it makes more sense to me to do it this way. Prevents the the fish's mouth from getting hooked, from getting caught down on this and preventing and it'll stop you from you know missing a hook set. So I put some bumper beads there because if it, it clamps down on those, it's a smaller, it, it, you know, it's almost closed tight. And then if it does, it's just going to, right there, it might hear, it might open it back, gives it enough room to open up. So, that's what works for me. Now, 
put the bumper beads on and then we go with a uh, snare knot on the hook. Now, we're going to make one. And you're probably not going to be able to see it very well because I don't have no monofilament line or green or anything. But I don't measure. I just pull off enough so that I know I got plenty. Now, put your hook. See how it's bent back? Run through the back of the eye. Okay. Come down. Give yourself plenty of tang. Excuse me, y'all. Now, start wrapping. Your hook's going to have that burr in it. Don't ever... that If they have that slip, a lot of hooks that are connected. This one is soldered connected. Right there. But some aren't. Some have a little gap. You don't want to start out on that. It can, it can cut your line. So make sure that you start your wrap with this side. And like I said, people are going to correct me and say whatever this, that, and the third. This is what works for me. I don't have any problem out of it. So I start here. I wrap. I go around. I wrap down the shaft of the hook. I usually go 10, 11, 12 times, depending on the length of my hook. Depends on if I go here. So like this is a, this hook has a long shank on it. So I'm gonna go down about 10, 12 times. Now, make sure you keep your line wet while you're doing this because you don't wanna stretch it and burn it and cause a weak spot in it, cause it to break. Go back up one or two times and go back through my hands in the way as I'm holding the line. Y'all see how the hook is. Okay, so now I want to go back through here. Okay, now make sure all that's wet. Hold your tang and pull. Make sure this cinches up tight. That should be your finished product. Okay, now. This is something that I've just recently started doing. Because I, I, you know, I catch a few bigger fish now. Just to put some insurance on it. But you don't have to do this. This leftover piece of tang. Take it. Tie your little regular knot. Okay. And slide it down. And y'all be careful, y'all pulling these with your teeth and stuff. Keep that hook away from your mouth. You don't want to hook yourself. I've did it before. My nose and stuff, I've hooked myself. All right, cinch that down. Take your clips. Clip it off right that knot. And you see now, if... This was to pull so some kind of way. It's going to snick on that knot. It's going to make it even that much tighter. Now, the reason why I do this the way I do it is what I've seen other, other people have done. And a lot of this is trial tested. Catfish's mouth. Okay. So, he's hooked. It's in his jaw. Your line's pulling. You're pulling, okay. You see how it's pulling? It's pulling that hook in to my hand if it is the other way and you go to pull it's going to pull and it's not it will pull it out of there okay it'll it will rip it right out of there I'll show you on this circle hook see pulling watch see how it's pulling into my hand the hook is designed see how it's it's going into my skin if it's the other way it's going to pull it like this. All right. So. Somebody will correct me. They always do. But. 
Y'all see, I do not lose very many fish at all. Most of the time, the fish that I lose is due to abrasions that have came on my leader line that I didn't catch and my leader line has popped. Um, my knots, they don't never come loose, pop, break or anything. Um, so now, what you would do next is, is you would slide, if you wanted to make a Carolina rig, just a regular st standard Carolina rig, your next step would be to tie your swivel on. So, you paint it. So you would paint your line, and you slide it through your swivel hole, or how, whatever knot you use, okay? We'll, we'll put it that way. I personally use polymer knots, okay? They work for me. I love them. I guess it comes from where I, I you know, I was a bass fisherman as a child, and, you know, I tied a lot of, and I used um, braid, so I, I tied a lot of polymer knots, you know. It's just a carry-on thing. All right, so you would paint your line, you slide it through, okay? Now, here's your polymer knot. So, that's what I'm going to show y'all how to tie. Catch your line. Make a loop. Run it through your loop, if y'all can see. Okay? I know it's probably hard. Now, it's going to look like a pretzel. Pull that loop down and catch that swivel. Okay. It'll look like that. Let it. And stench it down. perfect polymer knot. Then you'll cut off your excess. And you have a standard regular Carolina rig. Now, next step would be is to take your main line running to your reel. You would slide your sinker slide or your weight on and I don't know what's wrong with my phone, y'all, but anyway, backpack, that's what I use, y'all, and then I'll take and I'll put me some trays in it, little clip trays, and whatever other gear I need, um, yeah, and I do, I carry me a little safety pouch, where <clears throat> I always make sure I got some black tape, a lighter with some duct tape on it. And y'all know them tricks, you know, that duct tape will light up quick, you know, it's, it's, I always keep me a little hand sanitizer thing in here, you know, I try to stay prepared best I can, because you never know, fishing these bank lines, y'all, you got to be safe, you know, you got to be safe, so think about what conditions could happen, you know, make sure you got you something to start a fire with, especially fishing in these cold conditions, you get wet, you need to you need to make sure that you're safe. If you fall in, you make sure you can start your fire quick. Like I said, put you some duct tape around your lighter. If you don't smoke, but keep it in there. Or some kind of waterproof, whatever or not. But the duct tape around a lighter, if you if say things around you are wet, that duct tape will light up quick and it will burn and melt down and it'll burn for a minute. And it'll give you enough time to get whatever little tenders you're trying to get put on there to get it lit up. Hey, also, big, big super shout out to all of my subscribers that follow me here. And the ones that follow me over on TikTok. The link will be in the description for everything I'm talking about. Thank y'all so much. Y'all are amazing. Also, shoot the comments up. If you see something you want me to see me try, some more rivers, some gear, whatever not. Let me know. We'll try it just like I did this video for y'all. Also, 
The ones that fish the waterways I fish. If y'all want to meet up, we'll hit the bank line. All you got to do is hit, shoot me an email. Hit me in the comment section. We'll do the best we can do. We'll hit up. We'll hit these bank lines. We'll reel in some monsters. That's what it's about, y'all. To the next one. God bless and tight lines. That's all, y'all. Sorry, y'all. I had a difficulty with my phone there. All right, so now, where I was at is your main line running to your reel. You slide your sinker slide on. I got light coming through now through my window here. Let me put that up there so it won't. All right, so you excuse me. Your sinker slide or your weight would go on your main line, then your bumper bead, then you would tie your knot on to this. And again, I tie another polymer knot. Um, that's that rig. So we'll go over same principles. For everything and you have a um, Santee rig which has now had added rattles and your regular Santee rig would be this your Carolina rig with an added peg float your standard regular peg float which I just put a slip peg on there but there you go and that is the bring in point say I'm fishing a body of water that um I was running a Carolina rig okay and <clears throat> I'm running a Santee rig and let's say I'm not catching anything on my Carolina rig my Santee rig's pulling in the fish I'm going to slap me a peg on there, cast it out there. Now I got two rods in the water running the same kind of rig, doubles my chances. Instead of me having to cut my rig off and making a new one, I just turned it into what I needed it to be with simply sliding that on there. But once again, I don't like using these a lot because they tear up very easily, you know, because they got that slit on them beating and banging around or whatever not, they will tear up. Um, I have yet to catch anything on these. I bought some though. Um, and you would put it on your rig basically the same way. Your line would tie. It would tie. So that it would be set up. Like so. So you would, your line would tie off here and come down to your hook and your line would tie off here and go over to your swivel. Um, I've seen some guys just run it through the eye, loop it, run it, loop it, loop it, and loop it and don't tie any knots in it. And I've seen some tie knots. I've seen some use clips. So you just make it. To your personal preference like I said I haven't caught anything off of these uh, I don't use them very much because they're kind of expensive um this is a standard bass spook I bought it on Amazon I gave two dollars and ninety nine cent for that but these things range in various of prices so whatever your skill or comfort level is um that being said, uh, I hope that helped y'all. We tied up some rigs. We went over some weights. We went over some line that I use for my leader line. Uh, went over some things in my tackle box. Um, these are the, some rattlers. We'll show you these real quick. Some different kinds of rattlers. Y'all seen the orange one on the rig. They come in all different colors. It's black. They come in whites, oranges, yellows, greens. This one glows in the dark. Yeah. These glow. Um, use them how you want. Tie them how you want. Play with what I told you to do because that's what I've done. I've watched other YouTube content creators, catfishing people, 
on how they make your stuff, how they tie it up, what they use, watch them catching fish on it. Hey, okay, I try it. I rework it a little bit to fix my body of water. You can watch previous videos of mine. You can see all of this gear that I use in action. Um, that being said, hey, don't forget to hit that like, share, follow, comment, all of that good stuff. I really appreciate it. Now, we'll go over this one last thing, and then we'll tell y'all a few announcements, and we're going to cut it off short. <clears throat> Your Santee rig, whether it has rattlers or not, the purpose of this rig is your main line coming up, your weights, okay? It's going to be right here where your swivel is at. So that's sitting on the bottom of the water in whatever kind of water you're fishing in. This, this peg float is buoyancy. So it's going to raise your bait up, okay? So now your bait is more in the scent column. And it's not laying flat on the bottom, in the muck, in the mud, in the weeds, or wherever it's at. You're bringing it up off of the bottom. Now, if you don't have them rattlers on there, it's just sitting there floating. And if you've got current, then your bait is hooked on to the end of this hook, and it's just kind of moving around, like so. It's, it's putting it more presentable to what you're trying to target. If it's got these rattlers on it, as it's doing that, these rattlers are moving around. They're twisting, they're turning. And I was slow to use these, but they have worked. Y'all hear my kitten in the background? It hears these rattlers. All right, so now, this is adding action to your bait. So these are moving around and rattling, making noise, vibrations, baits in the water, moving around gives you a better chance. Sometimes this rig won't work. Sometimes these rattlers ain't gonna work. Sometimes this Santee rig ain't gonna work. You ain't gonna nothing but a Carolina rig. And you want it sitting flat on the bottom. You want it to be in the muck or the mud. Or you want to get down to that depth. You don't want no action in the water. That is the case sometimes. Sometimes you have to just play. I carry always two to three kinds of, whatever kind of rigs i'm using i always make sure i got multiple ones i'm casting out these multiple rigs in these spots especially if it's a new spot i have no clue what i'm fishing in i don't know what's going to attract them so i throw everything at them and when i start catching the fish then i start using those i keep a notepad in my backpack i write down the water conditions the dates, the times that I'm fishing, where I'm fishing, the location I'm fishing, what the fishing conditions are like, what the water's like. I write all of that down. Every fish, I, when I reel it in, if I'm weighing a fish, I write the weights. If not, I write the length and the measurements down, and then I release them back into the water. Why do I do that? That is so I know. So now I can go back through my book and I can say, I fished here before. What did I use? Oh, I caught this on a Carolina rig. Oh, I caught this on a Santee rig. Or I caught this on a rattle rig. Or however I caught the fish, I've got it jotted down. I know. So when I get there, that's what I'm going to start out slinging. Now, your water conditions might change. So you might have to change what you're doing. But if you already know what catches fish and how what rig or what baits catch fish at that spot that you're fishing at, throw that back out there at them again. It's very simple. It only takes a minute to write it down. A little notepad, a little whatever. Keep it in your backpack. Keep it in your tackle box. Write it down. I'm telling you, it will help you if you want to be serious about what you're doing. Make a log, a journal of it. Hey, we got some gear coming out, y'all. We going. Uh, we got a promo code for Big Cat for uh, Catch the Fever, Big Cat Fever rods, gear, and all of their stuff. All of this stuff will be in the description box, so look it up. All of the links and everything, and if you don't follow me over on TikTok, hey, go check me out. Forgotten Souls underscore 76. Hey, I appreciate it, y'all. Thank you for all the support and everything. Um, 
y'all want to see more videos like this or other videos, like I said, drop it in the comment section. I do all this for y'all. Just like I, I put the work in, get that promo code for y'all so that y'all can get a discount. Because y'all know all of this stuff is off of my dime. Gas, everything. Taking y'all to these spots, all of this gear I use, it's all off of my dime. There is no support, no backing, no anything. So, y'all. Also, before y'all kill me in the comment section, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I'm just old hillbilly. I know I say tang when it should be tagline and a whole bunch of other words, but you know what? That's just me. That's who I am. Hey, also, forgot one thing. We will be going live from the bank on TikTok a lot this season. If I can get signal, I will be going live. So if y'all want to catch me out live fishing, hey, catch me out on TikTok. And once again, God bless. Tight lines. That's all.